Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on. Let your fears. Welcome to A Time for Truth. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff. And today we're going to cover something very interesting in terms of mental health electroshock therapy. And an interesting statistic is that 90% of electrical fatalities, just of electrical workers, are due to electric uh, current in their job, in their homes, causing death. So another interesting factor is that most of us probably, having seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest uh, years ago with Jack Nicholson and with electric shock and the horrificness of it, uh, had thought that this was something of past uh, antiquated times and to my horror uh, when I was speaking to a fellow colleague on her training uh, she told me that it was ongoing in major hospitals in the New York area which I was aghast so today we're going to be covering that with an expert and other issues on mental health in our youth and so uh, Victor what we're going to do please if you put the pictures of our special guest on the screen and I'm going to introduce Mr. Lee Spiller, born in Staten Island, New York, and now residing in Texas, where he serves as the executive director of the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, Texas. Lee has championed human rights over 24 years, restoring integrity and safety to the field of mental health by collaborating in the passage of legislation concerning the right to inform consent for psychotropic drugs, the right to seek alternatives, including no treatment at all, curbing drugging in nursing homes, curbing directly restraints, and he has spoken nationally and internationally on the topic of human rights and mental health. Lee, having witnessed the devastation of a relative and a childhood friend's mother by psychiatric electric shock treatment, was motivated from an early age in this cause. In 1997, he decided to put his investigative skills to work on cases of psychiatric abuse and worked, si worked alongside law enforcement officials, as you see here on the screen, attorneys, and groups ranging from the American Civil Liberties Union, the NAACP, AARP, Eagle Forum, Texans for Accountable Government, and many, many others. Mr. Spiller has worked ceaselessly to expose psychiatric abuse and support legislation that protects patient populations from fraud and abuse. He basically says, we really enjoy working in a big, diverse coalition that represent the interests across the political spectrum. As a constant student of human rights and mental health, in 2018, Mr. Spiller was invited to testify before a joint hearing of the Texas Supreme Court and Court of Criminal Appeals on the need for the protection of rights and mental health. He testified before the FDA Advisory Committee and numerous legislative committees in Texas as an invited expert on the issues of deadly restraints informed consent for psychiatric drugs in foster care and nursing homes, the association between psychiatric drugs and mass violence. He's addressed dignitaries in the United Kingdom and South Africa, 
on human rights and mental health. Most recently, he conducted a speaking tour in his home state of Texas, educating parents on parental rights regarding their kids with mental health. In 2015, he received a special award from the Texas for Accountable Government Organization. He spoke at the Libertarian Party of Texas 2016. And in 2018, he was awarded the prestigious International Freedom Medal from the International Association of Scientologists for championing the field of mental health. Mr. Spiller states that human rights are nonpartisan and we are basic and they're basic and essential. So Buddha, if we can, I'd like to bring Mr. Spiller up on the screen and welcome him to a Time for True show. Well, hey, it's great to see you and thank you for having me. Um, can't talk about this too much, but I may. It's a very important topic and I want to get right to it. So first thing I wanted to ask you, because I was in shock about the uh, electric shock treatments, thinking it was antiquated. So what is the current status regarding youth and mental health? Okay, first things first, shock treatment. It's still antiquated. It's dressed up. The patients these days are paralyzed and under anesthesia. You're still inducing a grand mal seizure. It just doesn't look as bad. That's the improvement in shock treatment. You're still putting somebody into a seizure. It still causes memory loss, sometimes permanent memory loss. In fact, that's been one of the really heartbreaking things in interviewing uh, shock survivors has been how many people lose precious memories like getting married or the birth of their children. And yet psychiatry has been pretty unsympathetic to that. It is quite, quite, quite alarming. Uh, you know, and so what's going on uh, in terms of uh, youth in our country, in terms of the issues with mental health? I'm sure the parents out there want to know and are very curious. Sure. Well, you know, with the pandemic, there's been a lot of attention on it and we've had our attention on it. You know, there were many, many dire predictions uh, over the course of the pandemic on uh, how adults and children were stressed out, depressed. It was predicted that we see, would see upticks in suicide. So far, not the case, which is really good to hear. Um, let's look at some of the stats on this. So. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I think the Atlantic said it best a couple of months ago. They had some members, you know, the Lancet Medical Journal, actually, they have a task force for mental health and I mean, yeah, mental health of the pandemic. And three of their task force members wrote an article and they said that the pandemic affected people's mental health, but not like you thought it would. And, and they said that, um, uh, Let's see here. The world's psychological immune system turned out to be more robust than expected. And they pointed out that while at the beginning of all the lockdowns, yes, there were a lot of nervous, depressed people. And, you know, there were surveys being done and it looked like a lot of people were anxious and depressed. They said that by summer, uh, people's stress levels were returning to pre-pandemic levels. And that's pretty much what we've seen. We've seen lower numbers of... Uh, I think Journal of the American Medical Association published an article about lower numbers of uh, veterans with suicidal thoughts, lower numbers of suicides in the U.S. Uh, we, because we were concerned about, you know, it, it, it's, it's this media blitz. We were concerned about it. So we started reaching out to local medical examiners to find out, well, what's the truth? And in the counties where we were able to get um, information um yeah most were e either lower suicide rates or even or the two counties that were slightly up were still lower than they were in a previous year when there was not a pandemic so yes we need to love our children we need to take care of our children but uh right now i would worry more about who is putting out these scary messages Right. Our concern is that this will be used to get screenings and things like that into schools where, you know, depression screening and suicide screening, it's not really predictive. Uh, you can have false positives. 
And trust me, when you get uh, branded as suicidal and you're not, you're still going to the psych hospital. Uh, we had a case in 2004 where a uh, young African-American girl was screened at school. Uh, the University of Texas was doing a research program. First screening was wonderful, no problem. She got a letter back from the school, your daughter's doing great. And then a few weeks later, they're like, you need to check your daughter into the psychiatric hospital. And the parents were former mental health workers, so they took her, their daughter to where they used to work. They're not seeing it. They say, keep an eye on her. You know, if anything changes, let us know. And they thought they were out of the woods. And then about 45 days later, Child Protective Services calls the father from the school and says, come get your daughter and take her to the psych hospital. And he can't. His wife has the car. And so he was told, well, you just lost your daughter. And her, his daughter was taken away. She was put in Austin State Hospital. She was put on as many as 13 different drugs. My she God. was restrained 26 times. And, you know, we've worked with this system a lot. We're, we're pretty good at helping people navigate it. It still took us, a reporter, a bulldog lawyer, a psychologist, and her family doctor four months to get that child home. Amazing. You, you know what's amazing to me is some of the common sense because we all know that when we lose a, a beloved family member that we go through a process of depression, grieving, uh, you know, crying, grief. And um, during COVID, really, if you look at it, we had a loss. We didn't get mm -hmm. to be with our friends. We had to isolate. We had to quarantine, obviously, to be safe. There was a lot of fear. And to me, it's amazing that these factors somehow are being treated medically with drugs or with, with different treatments rather than really establishing some normality on socialization or techniques to, to somehow uh, allow that to occur in society. Uh, it's beyond me. But what I want to ask you, because I, I know you have so much information on the show. So in terms of youth in the country, because you just brought one up now with this young girl, uh, what human rights abuses uh, need to be corrected? What do the parents need to know and how do they go about protecting their kids? The parents need to know their rights and they need to know them particularly in school mental health. You know, parents have the right to give informed consent, right? I mean, that's universal. You have the right to direct the care of your child until somebody says you can't. And um, in school, you have a right to access your child's records. You have the right to um, say, hey, I don't want my ch child to have these screenings. Um, you, you know, it, it's, they're robust and I'm not as familiar with them uh, nationally as I am in Texas. In Texas, mm -hmm. I'm just, it's just shocking how many rights parents have. And yet they don't always know them. So our position is always, you know, if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. And uh, so that, that's, that's why we educate on it. Um, that's very, that's very true, uh, Lee. You know, what I was going to ask you is the Citizens Commission on Human Rights group that you're director of in Texas. Um, tell the viewers a little bit about uh, the website, what information they can obtain, and, and also if they can find out about their rights on the website. Uh, yes, at cchrtexas.org, you can actually, um, you know, if you're a Texas parent, you can look at the... Um, parents' rights section of the Texas Education Code and see exactly what your rights are in school. And, you know, you can link and you can actually read the law from one end to the other if you want to. Uh, CCHR International has an incredible website, um, lots of timely news, and uh, you can look up um, drug side effects, right? And, and that's important because informed consent is actually one of the most fundamental Right. You have a right to know what do they think you have? Uh, what are your options? What are the what are the benef purported benefits of the treatment that they're offering? What are the risks? What are the alternatives? And uh, th those are important things to know, because then you can make an informed choice and it's not OK to gloss over the risks. So the CCHR International uh, website with that drug search engine actually gives you a chance to better inform yourself all in one place, you know, you can type in a drug and there it is. 
Uh, the CCHR Fight for Kids org website is another very handy one. It, it it goes more deeply into parental rights, and it also has a uh, you know a forum to opt your child out of intrusive surveys, mental health screenings, and things like that. Uh, you know, it's a right you have. You know, but you can put the school on notice, and it can actually um, generate some really constructive dialogue between the parent and the school. Now, I've been dealing with one of the moms that went to one of our presentations back before the lockdown, and she's going through that right now. She's filed the letter, and uh, now she and the uh, principal are dialoguing, and it, man, it's going great. You know, the, the school is getting a better idea of what she expects, and they're also on, on notice that, yeah, she knows her rights, and to me, it just makes the whole situation better because both sides are able to explain themselves. You know, it's like, it's like you know, a, lo a long time ago, I thought that human rights was a fight. Uh -huh. And then as I got older and worked more, I discovered that it was a conversation. And we can, if we can keep people having those conversations, you know, the, the very worst that's going to happen is they're going to know where each other stand. And the right. best that's going to happen is they are going to be able to come up with a plan that really works for them because, you know, universally, um, parents are supposed to be partners in their child's education. And uh, I would submit they ought to be in the driver's seat, but you can't do that if you're not talking. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's a lot of parents I know watching the show and probably there's some out there who have some kids that are having issues. So uh, mm -hmm. are there certain things that you would recommend or certain things on the on the website or within CCHR where they can call. What would you recommend to those parents out there viewing the show? Number number one, whatever state you're in, uh, study your state's you know parents' rights in education. Usually, if you could just search that, you know, New York parental rights schools, you'll find something. All right? Like I was looking today, y'all got a decent set of rights. People just need to know them. Uh, look at your student parent handbook because it usually has basic rights things you have to consent to things they can't do without your consent what the grievance process is for that and then also if you have a kid that uh, is having problems sufficient to uh, you know that they need special ed services the states are required to um, inform parents of the various procedural safeguards in the uh, special ed system Right. So it's really possible to know your rights. And if you start having trouble with it, um, Google special education advocate or education advocate. Uh, some states, they have to be attorneys. Some states, a non-attorney can actually practice advocating for kids in schools. And they can be really helpful. If it's worse than that, if people are leaning on you about your child and mental health, you can always call the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. Uh, you, you can either contact CCHR International through the internet, or you can call me 1-800-572-2905. Well, you know what? Uh, it's very important because, you know, when you're in the middle of that situation, it can be very stressful. And to think that you could lose control over your you know your child and you know that you're looking your dream for what you had for your children uh it's very very important that 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 happens uh how does in general i'm just curious how does in general does the citizens commission on human rights uh operate what kinds of uh you know services do they offer Okay, so generally somebody contacts CCHR uh, after an abuse has occurred or their loved one may even still be in the hospital. And um, we're going to document abuse. So, you know, we help the person get their records. You know, we help them navigate that because you got to fill out forms. You know, so we try to find the forms for them or just get them to call the hospital. But anyway, once they have the records, we try to review those records. If there's something complicated in medical, try to get a doctor to help. And a lot of times, you know, but particularly in Texas where we have worked on so many of the laws, we can pretty much review for the rights laws easily. And based on that, then we'll file complaints. You know, if there's something there that we can hang our hat on, boom, it's a complaint. 
and it could be regulatory if it's really bad it could be criminal and um and then it goes from there you know um pretty often you know you, you'll get the things will run in phases like like with us with people being held against their will for two or three years that was the number one call we got and i was telling a friend of mine who's the uh, investigative reports producer at a tv station in dallas about this and out of the blue they got a call and a mom couldn't get her son out of a psych hospital mm -hmm. and then we got a call from uh basically a friend of a friend who is a sheriff's deputy. He knows the law and his daughter had been stuck in the psych hospital. They went there to get her out. And when the hospital wasn't playing ball, the parents got up to leave. They were going to go get a lawyer. They got restrained and literally had to fight their way out of the hospital. And luckily this is a, you know, this is an audio visual world. So it was caught on videotape. And uh, the TV station aired that piece. Actually, they aired the teaser to that piece. And with it, within two hours, they had dozens of people saying, hey, that happened to me. And before it was all said and done, you know, they had a uh, an investigative piece that took up half of their 10 o'clock broadcast, plus four, followed with a 42-minute town hall on Facebook. Uh, the patients got together, found attorneys, sued hospitals, um, a local district attorney, the, their office actually uh, got indictments against one of the hospital chains and uh, eventually that hospital chain shut down and pled guilty for illegally holding a patient against your will. That's pretty much how it goes. That's very, really horrific to hear that because here we are living in the, you know, what I consider the greatest country on earth with our freedoms, democracy, and where we're really supposed to encourage freedom of speech and rights and what you're saying to me is really appalling uh, that, that it's going on and uh, because, you know, censoring someone's ability to protect their child and some of the censoring that I've seen in general, having been born myself in Cuba, uh, I was very concerned uh, when, you know, what happened in our country, my whole family left for freedom yep. so i think that what you're doing and what the cchr group is doing to protect rights and the liberties of our people is so important if there are viewers out there that want to do something and help uh call you or with cchr what would they do how would you suggest they go about you know getting in contact and what can they do um you know frankly i would just encourage people to contact cchr international uh, let them know what the interest is and um, generally speaking uh, we're not that hard to find you can also contact cchr texas through cchrtexas.org or call us on the 800 number 1-800-572-2905 and uh, yeah it's a matter of uh, you know it's situational what does the person want to do and, and what is their what have they experienced but i can tell you it's rewarding because literally when you're documenting cases and helping people tell their story, you're giving them a voice. You're helping them do something about it. And, and I think almost one for one, these abuse cases, it comes down to they weren't able to do anything about it. And you're shifting them into a position to where now they can, no matter how slight. And that's absolutely, you, tell that's, you, that's absolutely true. It makes total sense to me. And you know what I wanted to ask you, uh, as we get near the end of the show, what concluding remarks do you want to leave the viewers with? And uh, I know we'll continue at another time, but what would you like to let the viewers know that you feel is important as a take home message from today? Uh, for you parents, especially know your rights and know how to defend them. And if, if it's more than you can handle, call somebody call us you know we'll help you look for somebody whatever but let's you know just really knowing your rights is half the battle knowing your rights and if uh you know in terms of uh you know them being involved in and in, in, in uh you know and in, in what's going on in the country 
Uh, what would you say, from your viewpoint, is the direction we should be heading? Um, I think parental rights and school mental health is actually um, key. It, it seems it's, it, it's one of the most common uh, issues. And parental rights in general, you know, like right now during the pandemic, oh my gosh, there is there is so much of a hubbub about wearing masks or not wearing masks. And in the in the middle of it, parents are talking about different, you know, other other issues. And I'm like, guys, that's the symptom, right? The root is rights and informed consent and being able to make a choice. And uh, so when you're talking about some of these issues, if you worry about that without going a little bit deeper and going, okay, so what are my rights really? And how can I enforce them? You're never getting rid of the disease. You're treating the symptom, right? You have got to actually look at where do we stand in terms of parental rights and individual liberty. Uh, and again, Florida's uh, Parents' Bill of Rights is a really good law. And uh, another one they passed, um, you know, because there's this other underlying problem. Some places you see it, some places you don't. And that is kids getting hauled off from school to a psychiatric hospital. And uh, Florida, you know, Florida, God, what was it? Uh, in one year, they had over 200,000 people that were detained. Over 30,000 of them were kids. And, uh, you know, in some cases you had kids being marched out of school in handcuffs while their parents watched helplessly. Now, there was a case of that in San Antonio a couple of years ago. Seven-year-old autistic in handcuffs saying, I want to go home. And his dad was helpless to do anything except video it. So this year, Florida passed a law that says, guess what? You're a parent. You can take custody of your kid. We need well, that. you know what? You know what? Good, good that we have some rationality going on. And I'm very happy that you and the other people in CCHR have been helping and the, the other politicians who are getting involved in this and the officers in the communities. I definitely can see that this is a cause that we all need to be involved in. There can't just be Lee Spiller doing it. This has to be a whole group activity. And when you really think about it, it's our kids. It's also our elderly and really anybody. So we really want to make sure that they're getting the best possible future and not being harmed and having their choices because we do live in the greatest country on earth, America. So we're at the end of the show. I want to thank you for having come on the show, Mr. Lee Spiller. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. A pleasure to have you. you have a wealth of knowledge. I would love to have you back. And for those of you watching, May you have a fantastic weekend. Check out the cchr.org website and contact Mrs. Spiller if you'd like to help or if you need help. And thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode of A Time for Truth. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything it's falling apart, yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got. The world takes you down, you just keep moving on at your feet.